So here I am with Jim Fowler in San Antonio, Texas. We've been friends now for 17 years and had the privilege of coming to see him uh, during this Thanksgiving break. And uh, we've been enjoying each other and just talking about the things of Jesus. And while I was here, he had informed me that the a clinic where he had his uh, prosthetics put on because he's had this double amputee, wanted him to do a video, uh, just an educational video for those who are amputees and just learning Correct. about the particulars. So, but as we talked, we also recognized the significance, not only of the, the physical dynamics, but also the psychological and the spiritual. True. So I wanted Jim to share with you a little introduction before the video that we've already recorded so that you can understand that dynamic. So Jim, take it away. Okay, yes, this is sort of an, either an introduction or an epilogue, I'm not sure which, to the video that uh, was done on the, from bed to prosthetics. And uh, obviously, if, if you have your legs amputated, that's a physical trauma. Uh, and some people think, oh, I can't, I can't even conceive of that possibility. Well, it happens, things happen. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I did want to point out that it's not just a physical phenomena or occurrence that happens for one's legs. Uh, anything physical happens in our body also happens in our soul and in our spirit. Paul mm -hmm. said that we're comprised of spirit and soul and body, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Mm -hmm. And so things happen to us physical, but there's also the, the soul. And obviously in the midst of my amputations, uh, there was uh, the distress, there was the, uh, the pondering of what's gonna happen. Uh, in fact, it, it, it went into depression. And I even had dreams while I was still in the hospital of, uh, of committing suicide. And that's okay. Uh, I know some people think, oh, that shouldn't happen to a Christian, but it, it does happen. The, the tempter is the, the one that has the power of death, and uh, he's going to tempt you in that way, and he did me. But the, even more than just the physical and, the, and what happens in your soul is what happens in the spirit. And through this whole process, I learned a deeper level of trust in God mm. and a, a realization that he was going to work in my life no matter what. He, he was totally sufficient for anything that might happen. Uh, so it, it was a valuable occurrence. As I say, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. That uh, cut off my legs because it cut off my pain and drew me closer to God. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, stay tuned for a tremendous video that will walk you through the whole process. <laughs> Good morning, world. Hello, my name is Jim Fowler, and I'm 78 years old. And uh, as you can see, I'm a double amputee, bilateral amputee, to use the correct terminology. And uh, my amputations, double amputation, both below the knee amputations, occurred uh, two years and eight months ago. And uh, I went through the usual concerns and anxieties of whether or not I was ever going to be mobile again or ambulatory, able to drive a car. Well, I am able to do that now. And I, I'm doing this video just to show you that how it is that a double amputee can continue to live life and do whatever is necessary. And I'm sure many people say, well, how, how can a double amputee do what's necessary? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how I get up out of bed, how I go and put my my prosthetics on. As you can see right now, I have these uh, compression socks. Every amputee has to wear. They're called shrinker socks, and they keep your residual limb or stub, as I can often call it, uh, so that they don't swell at night, and they can fit into the sockets of the prosthetics. So I wake up in the morning, and I... Uh, move over to my uh, 
Go-Go. It's, it's a Pride Go-Go uh, electric mobility scooter. It's, it's the best one for around the house, I found. I've, I've used others, but this one allows me to get around the house. And so uh, to get out of bed, I move from, from the bed over to the chair, over to the scooter. And uh, then I raise up the middle part of the bed. Electric devices are an amputee's best friend. Uh, so I have an electric hospital bed. And I move over to this electric scooter. And then turn around like this to, to out, go out. And I'm off on my way out to put on my legs in the other room, in the living room. On the way to the living room, I thought I'd take a slight diversion because many people wonder how a double, double amputee takes a shower since they don't have any legs to stand up in the shower. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to drive in here and I'm going to run over the photographer here. <laughs> And I back into this shower that we had specially made for this very purpose. Now, I, I didn't want this to be x-rated, so I, <laughs> I'm going to uh, leave my clothes on here. And uh, the scooter turns, and I can back this right up to the shower chair. And then I just slide off of the shower chair, I mean on the, off of the scooter, onto the shower chair. And you say, well, your scooter's going to get wet. Well, I have this arm extender. And I go right here, and I push the scooter forward out of the shower. There. And then I can lay it down, set it up, pull the shower, turn it on, and use the shower. And get the soap and everything set right here. And so when I'm done, I then put it up, turn it off, grab my patch towel, dry off, and then I've got to get that scooter back. So I reach back up here and I hit the, the to reverse. That's good enough. I'll reach up here like this. Grab it. Not bad for a 78-year-old man. <laughs> and so I can pull it forward, turn it back around. <laughs> um, and then I come around here. I'll go over here. Gonna, I'm going to back up right where you are. And I back right up to here to brush my teeth, take my vitamins, take a shave. Now, of course, I can turn this so it faces like that. Made just for that. Do my shave and uh, do my brush, brush my teeth, all that. And face the day. Go back in and put my legs on. <laughs> so that's how you do it in the shower. <laughs> and uh, I'm still on the scooter, so I pull it up here. And I back up to the chair. <laughs> and I make the transition from the chair, this scooter, to the chair. And move the scooter out of the way. And we're in. Sure is nice to have all these uh, electric devices, electric bed, and electric scooter, and electric chair. Yeah, it makes it easier for someone who's an amputee like myself. And so the first 
thing I do in the here is to clean the in, inner liners or inner sleeves, kind of made out of a polyurethane material, kind of like a gel, and uh, I clean them with Lysol wipes. One will do. And what we're doing here is just cleaning the uh, moisture, moisturizing solution that we put on our legs morning and evening. And that's very important because if you don't keep your legs, your stumps moisturized, they'll dry out and they'll, they'll bleed. So it's very important to clean, uh, put the moisturizer. I'll show that in just a minute. Right now we're just cleaning the inner sleeves. Just clean the, clean the oil off. Take off the shrinker socks. Put on the lotion. One leg at a time. That lotion, as I say, is very important. You don't want these legs to dry out. They can crack, bleed. Most painful experience. I haven't done it, but others have told me about that. <laughs> so, this is the next move is to roll that sleeve right up on the stump, actually the residual limb. And then put the moisturizing lotion on the other leg. As you can see, I've, I've tried to put these on so that they come out with the icon on top. I don't know that there's any, you could put them on anyway, but it's just my, my per preference. So, and then we put on what are called the spacer socks. The spacer socks will change. This is a number five. Uh, they have different plies, and this is a five. When you start off, you just you don't use any spacer socks. You just put these into the socket of the prosthetic, and then I have a smaller one to keep the keep it from wobbling around in there. So what I have is a five here and a three here. Uh, once you get up to uh, thirteen or so, then they will say it's time to change make a good new socket. But uh, right now I have eight on each leg and uh, it works just fine. Now, we come to the sockets. I received my prosthetics uh, five months after my uh, amputation. Some people get them in a shorter period of time, but that's what it took to get it through the, all the insurance and so forth. And uh, I went to New Life Brace and Limb. They're the ones that did my prosthetics. 
a great company. I went in, the first time I went into the prosthetic clinic, I said, what are the odds that a 75-year-old man, because that's what I was when I had the amputation, is ever going to be able to be mobile, ambulatory, walk again? And the director said, well, it's not good news. He says, I would say you have a 4% chance that you, at 75 years old, are going to be able to walk again with prosthetics. And I said to him, well, I'm going to be in that 4%. Uh, so sure enough, I w got the prosthetics five months after the amputation. And I said to my daughter, I said, I'm going to walk out of this clinic the first day. And that, that was unheard of. That clinic had never had anybody walk out. But, and I didn't walk out gracefully. I mean, I had a walker and I'd do one step at a time. And, but I made it out of that clinic the first time on my own mobilization. And I was able to come back into this house in the same way. Um, I felt good about myself. I felt like I had accomplished something. Uh, so now as we put these residual limbs into the sockets, again, the electric device, this electric recliner, which actually stand, it's a stand up recliner. Perfect for my, me because it just keeps standing up and allowing me to slide into these sockets. So you can see how convenient this makes it. If you, if you not, don't have this, you're pulling on, a, on the doorway trying to stand up. But uh, with this, I can do my pr most precarious act of the day, and that is let these limbs slide into these sockets. Now they have a little squeaker on the end because it, there's compression here. And, and uh, you're wanting to get them compressed into there. I'm gonna put, pull this back up. That's a different, an extra aid to my balance. And we just keep pushing those. Down to where they need to go. One thing many people don't understand is that this, the limb does not go to the end of the socket. The limb rides in the socket, but it, right, your, your weight is held on your knee. The protrusion of your knee is what is where your weight is, is uh, held. And so you just make sure that that gets down to the knee where you need it to go. And then I turn around, I sit down again, and put the chair back. Make sure the knees are down there where they should go. Pull that up, slide that up. And I go back and get that same Lysol wipe because this is going to go against the skin. So I want that to be nice and clean. So I'll let, let that dry for a moment. I found that I can do anything I did before, and I, I tell people that the, my amputation was the best thing that ever happened to me. I had severe pain in the lower limbs, a neurological, uh, has a name, but I don't remember it. <laughs> um, and so when they cut off my feet, they cut off my pain. I know that's very ironic, but then they cut off my feet, they cut off my pain. I have no pain whatsoever. And so uh, I'm very, I'm thrilled. I am thrilled at life after amputation.
I can't walk a long ways, but I, I can walk 100 yards, football field. And uh, I can walk into the stores, and walk into church. And uh, so uh, I'm pleased with where I'm at. And like, uh, I hope that, you know, you may have wondered, how does a double amputee do what they need to do? That's what the purpose of the video is, just to simply share with you that, uh, yes, there are the apprehensions you have, but uh, you, you overcome them. And I now, I walk, and I also, I can drive an automobile with hand controls. I have a, a new one, in fact, a new automobile. And I'm thrilled. I was thrilled to be able to drive an automobile. But in order to do so, I first had to take have an occupational therapist teach me how to drive with hand controls. And that took a couple months of lessons because it's a whole new, you have to have a whole new muscle memory because you've used your legs all your life and now you're learning to drive just with your hands. So let me explain this little apparatus here. If you push forward, that's brake. If you pull back and go like that, it's throttle. And so you're, you're steering here with the, with the knob, and this is brake and throttle. So you're, that's how you drive with hand controls. Uh, it's, it's not that difficult. I even have my turn signals right here on, on here. That I can turn them on with my finger and just go. <laughs> and so it gave me the freedom to get around driving in a different way than I had previously driven, and I'm delighted that I'm able to use that. I shouldn't do, but <laughs> I'm silly enough to do that. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>